How are we doing? Welcome back, people. The show must go on. It's Lee Judges TV. It's myself and Lee. And we've got Kenny Ken on with us tonight. So we're going to talk all things Arsenal. Arsenal have won a game of football. Woohoo! Uh, we're back in winning ways. We're bounced back. Premier League is back on and at least for a little while. Manchester City have a little bit of pressure on them finally. Uh, and they're chasing the pack. Listen, when Manchester City chase, it's a different sort of chase, let me tell you that. But we've done our job and that's all we can do. It weren't pretty in my opinion, but who cares? At this stage of the season, it's about results, not performances. And that's certainly what we got yesterday. Unbelievable day of football, which oh. we have to touch on, by the way, before we go into Arsenal. Uh, because that today, I mean, I must say, boys, unbelievable amount of switching from games today from me. I didn't know what one to watch at what time. <laughs> They're all at the same time. I see West Ham get pummeled, which is always fun to see. I see Man United and Coventry. I see Villa winning. Uh, where do we... we got Forrest crying, saying that VAR are now for support Luton. What a day of football, Lee. It was incredible. Absolutely incredible. Uh, and of course, Wolf and Mabby getting to, to the final uh, as well this morning, like, you know what I mean? So, uh, and and that's was sheet, Lee, wasn't it? Yeah, I'll add on the girl sheet, you know what I mean? So it's been a good day all round. But listen, I, I, I'm not going to lie. At 2 0, switched over from the Man United game. Thought that was done and dusted. Started watching the Liverpool game against Forest. Uh, sorry, against um, uh, Fulham. And then uh, it uh, come through that it was 3 2. So I thought, hold on, hold on. I'll have a little. Um, what a sensational game of football that was. I, I forgot. I'm going to be really honest about this because I left the Liverpool game at 1-0. I forgot the Liverpool game was on. I was so engrossed in that game. It was just um, Coventry City take a bow. I've always had, me and Kenny will probably vouch for this as well. We've always had a little soft spot for Coventry for obvious reasons. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, oh my God, they did that. If any team deserved to win that today, they did. I thought they were sensational. I thought they were brilliant in extra time. They were the better team, the stronger team in extra time. And let's face it, you know, um, that offside. When I see it, I knew it was offside. I said he's offside, like, you know, and uh, but and once it went penalties, I think you had to favour Man United. But a uh, 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 brilliant, brilliant day. I've got to say, brilliant day in the other game. Chelsea should have beaten um Manchester City, in my opinion, the two teams at the final shouldn't, didn't deserve to get there. But listen, if you don't take your chances, you don't score. But for Coventry today, I I, I just felt so sorry for him. And it was, of course, what our, one of our uh, older, well, yeah, uh, one of our youth players that missed, didn't he? Like, ben you know, Sheaf, so, yeah, Ben Sheaf, like, a shame. Ben Sheaf missed. And um, very, very disappointed in that. Uh, it, it, it's just, listen. I know that they've changed the FA Cup round again, and I'm pretty sure we're, we're all in the same boat here. I, 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 it's it's a wonderful, wonderful cup competition. I just don't like the way it's been messed around and all that. Like when I was growing up, it was special, special, really special, and that's why it, games like that today was was sensational, absolutely sensational. It was Kenny. It was unbelievable, and I must say, I watched Everton Forest first, and that was a madness. And then we saw a couple of incidents in that game. Forest chairman is an absolute nutter. Not only is he coming on offering people out on the pitch now, he thinks it's the Sopranos, and he's putting out threats to referees saying they're Luton fans. It's absolutely mad. These way top Forest are running stuff at the moment. And then of course we're going to what do you games do you watch? Do you watch West Ham get a pummeling? Do you watch Villa beat Bournemouth, or do you wait and uh, watch one of the most amazing FA Cup endings? You'll see in a long time and I've got to say if it weren't for a Nats winger whisker uh, Kenny um, Coventry go through mate I mean it was unbelievable what we saw at the end there it was really was Man United absolute shambles let's mm. be real the way they threw that 3-0 victory away mm. was actually uh, for me nail in the coffin of Ten Hag now that to me is like you're done son you are not good enough I hope he stays I really do but I don't think he mm. will uh, after that after seeing that and I've never known a man, you know, I've never known a football team. I don't know if you two have, maybe you have in your time, but I've never known a football team to win on a penalty shootout and not and not celebrate because they're so embarrassed. You know what I mean? It was actually embarrassing. Hoyland's sitting there trying to get the fans up and he turns around, all of his mates are still at the halfway line, and like, mate, we ain't celebrating mm. that. So listen, unbelievable game of football, weekend, day of football, should I say. And uh yeah, what did you make of it, bro? Well, first and full, first and foremost, sir. Uh... You know, that the May United game was absolutely crazy, but it serves them right. They're 3 0 up and cruising. 
and they started um, making substitutions as though the game is won. You, the game's never won. Just on a, a sapping pitch like Wembley, all it needs is uh, one goal will go in and then you start panicking. And, you know, this is with Man United and their problems, the way they let teams back in the games, it was always going to be a recipe for disaster. You know, the fact is, is that they were quite depleted anyway. So, you know, it was the game, you know, was a lot closer than it should have been. But, you know, there they are. Right decision. Let's face it. If, if yeah. Arsenal that decision, you'll be really, really upset about that. So, you know, the fairy tale was robbed from commentary. But in terms of the penalties, Casemiro just went and did it at a Ben of Silver moment. But <laughs> the fact is, is that, yeah, they're in the final. You know, he got a chance of silverware. I don't think it's going to be enough to save Ten Hag. But it is what it is with Man United. And, you know, I think we should sort of like say that criticism of Man United until um, the 12th of, um, sorry, the you know, 13th of May, because we're, we're playing them. You know, on the 11th, and let's not level 12. Let's not forget, as bad as kamikaze as they are, they always seem to um, get the results. Yeah, and the result, Kent. You know, we're gonna get to Arsenal soon, but in terms of like the Nottingham Forest game, again, I didn't see it, but I saw the tweet and I was thinking, there's no way anyone other than the chairman wrote that tweet. Absolutely, and, and, because you know, a PI person wouldn't that wouldn't um, you know have let that go out, but the chairman must have just. Pulled veto and um, said what he said. But yeah, again, I spoke to um, Albert, you know, a good friend of both of us, and he reckons all three of them were penalties. Now, I haven't seen it. I've got to see it for myself. But VAR is what it is. But the fact is, is that not for us, they don't owe us anything. They don't owe the Premiership anything. They don't owe Sky anything. You know, they be they were persecuted because they didn't, they didn't, the final straw in their sort of kind of points of deduction is that they didn't um, get the paperwork out in time when they, um, Sold them um, Brennan Johnson. You know, they're, they're waiting for the big Spurs to, um, you know, give them the full value. By doing that, they actually cost themselves some points. So, you know, I, I've got no sympathy for the, you know, the Premiership or, you know, or Sky Sports. And I think, you know, Jamie Carragher and um, Gary Neville, I think they wasted a good opportunity to keep their gob shut. I mean, there was, you know, you don't, you know, that they you know, they talk for England or talk for the North West, but. For them to just carry on and you know try and minimise the anger and the injustice that Nottingham Forest feels, I think that was an opportunity missed to keep your gob shut and you know talk about other things, i.e. the great game that they watched at Craven Cottage and also talk about Man United, which is basically Gary Neville's staple diet. But in terms of like Liverpool game, you know Liverpool did what um, we should have done probably yesterday. They freshened it up. You know the fact that you know Yotta the slaughter was playing for them and the fact that you know they they could grab the match back who's you know um basically um you know played a good game and scored but alex it won't be alex alex uh -uh, what are you doing alex one one give the ball away what are you doing but saying that you know if there was a game for Liverpool to, you know, to, you know, get their wheels back on their championship challenge, I think that was that game because Fulham's a very hard place to go, as we well know. You know, we got there, we got absolutely turned over, and you know, Fulham were very, very confident that they'll probably um, get some something out of the game as well. So Liverpool had to turn up the right attitude, and they did from the kick off. They were at it. So game on, game on. Got Chelsea tomorrow. Then we got the North London derby. They got. Uh, most side derby, and then they got West Ham away. But at the end of the day, it's game on, mate. Let's let's see what we can do. Yeah, man, let's see what we can do indeed. Lee, Arsenal, Liverpool done their job. Now it's for Manchester City. It's going to take a while for us to have that, but that opportunity uh, for, to see if they can capitalise on that. But Arsenal have now got to turn their attention to the midweek and make sure they go four points yeah. clear. But yesterday, I've got to say, you were there at the game. I watched it with my brother-in-law and my dad and family, and I thought, Oh, I'm bored of this. This is an absolutely horrible game to watch. This is not much going on. It's a bit meh. It's a bit flat. It's dull as anything up top. There's nothing in front of goal again. I didn't care. <laughs> I did against nah. Bayern Munich. I did against Bayern Munich. I cared a lot. And I did against Villa. But um, when I saw the result, sometimes you just got to say, do you know what? Get out of there with the three points. Move on to the next one. Um, in my opinion, a few players that definitely deserve a mention, but the one... For me, Declan Rice. And no. there's a few people I spoke to that didn't think he was that great, what he's average at best. I thought he was really good. I thought he played in a six. And do you know what? I thought he was even better in the second half when Party come on. And yeah. I want to see that now. Party heard of God and Rice. Let's just do it now for the next five games. Because that, for me, looked really good. And Rice driving forward, 
You know, this is a guy that everyone was actually looking at potentially resting, even myself. I said, does he need a rest? He's not been good that last couple of games. Thank God we didn't rest him, man, because I thought he was amazing. Erdegaard's work rate was there. A couple of weird shots he had, I thought, but actually did get the goal in the end. And I think he deserved it. And I said on my channel, he deserves it because of how he's been the only one who can hold his head up high, in my opinion, this week with actually saying, Do you know what? I was the best player. I come off against Villa. Weren't my fault, but they went 2-0 down. I was the only one that actually tried to do something against Bayern Munich home and away and drive us forward and actually looked like wanting it. So I was quite glad that he just got the goal that he deserved. Um, but Declan Rice yesterday, I thought he was player of the match by a long way, in my opinion. Yeah, like when it mattered then, when, when we was 1-0 up 10, 15 minutes ago, I was never really worried about the game until um, that last sort of 10 minutes when you know if they score... There was no way back, you know. So that, that that's when it got a little bit nervous for us, and that's when he become fantastic. And I, I I'm with you on that. It was when Thomas Party come on, it, it just sort of released him. He nicked the ball, won the ball, played it, drove forward. Last 20 minutes was was fantastic, like you know. Listen, I'm with you on it. It weren't the greatest game in the world. You could see there was a little bit of pressure on it after what happened, which is a little bit worrying if you if you want to be honest. But um what you've got to do, and it's as simple as this now, is defend properly and, and, and a little bit of magic somewhere along the line. And that's what happened with um, uh, Jesus. A lovely bit of skill to bring it down and all that. I thought it could have been a penalty, to be fair. Like, I know <laughs> I know we don't sort of get them, but, you know, but he done fantastically well. And then a, a great finish from Trossard. I don't care whether he meant to put it in there or not. It's, he, he's he's shot at goal and that's what's what, what counts. Um, uh some good performances. Ben White played well. Uh, Kivior had a bit of a tough uh, 20, 25 minutes, but grew into the game, which was good. Raya made a, a, a good save. Um, and I thought he's uh, he had a neat and tidy evening, if I'll be honest. But listen, um, Habert's done okay. But for me, I think next two games, he's got to play up front. And it's, all, it's down there. You know, we've got to set it up. We've got to go... On Tuesday, I don't care what anybody says, it's going to be a, a real, real tough game. Um, it could go either way. Um, that's how I feel. But um, whoever he plays, you know, Saka, I think, has got to be uh, up for this game. This is where this is where Saka, to me, is the man in the next couple of games. He's got to really produce. Uh, but, you know, listen, I don't care how boring it is. If we win our next four or five games... Is it five games now? Five games, one nil. I'll five, take that. Yeah. I'll take yeah, 100%, that. Yeah, 100%, mate. Yeah. I'll take that. But it was nervous. I, I'm not going to lie. Did I enjoy it like, yesterday? I, I started to enjoy it. When when Odegaard scored, I enjoyed it. Like, you know, but I, I had a couple of beers. I was, uh, you know, thinking, oh, I might need four, four or five more to numb this pain if anything happened. But listen, we got the result. And I'll tell you what a lot of people have said, and I understand that when they're saying they didn't play well, didn't do that. I've seen Arsenal play well and lose. Uh, I'd rather us play well and win, of course. But if you know, if you're asking me if we can play like that and win, I'm going to take that all day long. I'll be really honest. We're going to have to play a lot better against Chelsea and then Tottenham. But what we've done, we've, we've put a little um, confidence building block in there with that result now. Now we've got to take it on against um, Chelsea and then, of course, on on, on Sunday. But Sunday's, Sunday is can, nothing on my mind at this moment in time. It's all about Tuesday. It's Tuesday is a massive, massive game. And um, I'm going to enjoy tonight and tomorrow because on Tuesday I'll be all over the place because it is going to be a nervous game. I, I, I'm sure of it. Like, I'm really sure of it. Yeah, man, we'll get into Tuesday because it is going to be... Uh, just quickly before I come to Kenny Lee, Dylan's put top night. Monon, you've got to be the worst away end in the league, question mark. Yeah, I, I'm not a lover of it because it's... They're very clever how they do it. They put you all across the, um, the, the side. So you've got people singing at one end, it don't get down the other light, you know what I mean? And, and, and the atmosphere is not... Not great. Um, it's it's tough because you ain't all together. Um, so they've done it very very well. You get a very very good view there. I'll give you that. Uh, particularly if you're on the halfway line. The view's line. better than Sellers Park, but the atmosphere is not as good. Put it yeah, that way. and it's it's just one of those things that is. It's a lovely ground, but they're very clever how they do that um, to, to generate a good atmosphere for them and not for us. So yeah, totally agree with that. Uh, and listen, a lot of people have criticised the Arsenal fans yesterday. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say because of that. But the other reason is, uh, you know, 
if they all felt like me, I, I, I'm pretty sure they do. It was it was a massive game for us yesterday, and I think the fans realised that you know we had to win that game, and I think that the fans were nervous um, because I bloody well was. Yeah, it was, man. Um, Kenny, interesting team lineup. We saw Saka start again. We saw Rice start again. We saw Havertz, Trossard getting ahead of Martinelli. But Tommy Asu not in the squad got another knock. Now, I like Tommy Asu. Got a lot of time for him. And I think he's a really good defender. One on one, brilliant, airily very, very good, and a good squad player. But if this geezer's not fit, what is the bloody point of having him? Now, he's played two games in God knows how long. And now we've had to bring Kivior back in. Now, it's quite interesting that Zinchenko didn't get the nod, and that's quite telling for him and his future at Arsenal. But Kivior, bar a few moments in the first half of absolute madness, I agree with Lee, was a little bit better in the second. But when I look at it, I look at Tommy Asu and I look at Tierney, and I was having a chat with some of the lads of the WhatsApp group about how unavailable Tommy Asu is in compared to Kieran Tierney, who's been dumped out because of injury and no one wanted because of injury. He's played more games than Tommy Asu. I, I, honestly, I worry about the future of some of these lads that can't get a run of games. And Tommy Asu is mm. another one. So I don't know what your thoughts mm. were there, mate. Well, first and foremost, Kieran Tierney's one. You know, I'm probably the, you. Everyone is well documented that I don't rate this manager and I want him gone. And I'm sure you're of the same volition as me, Dan. But one thing is, is that his footman decisions regarding um, Aaron Ramsdale were valid. That's why I backed the decision. And the Kieran Tierney one, I understand the football reasons. We've got to be understand is that the manager wants to play an inverted style of play, especially where the way we play, especially where we attack, sometimes we do get a numbed in midfield. So he, do, he needed a Sinchenko-type player or Sinchenko to play that game. So regardless of the fact that even when Kieran Tierney was fit, let's just look at the, the you know, like I said, the evidence from last season and part of this season where it was anyone but Tierney. You know, Tommy Asu, Kivi, or were playing in those sort of positions. So it, it was very, very telling that, you know, he wasn't going to get a game um, because the manager didn't think he can fit into the style of play. But the whole Tommy Asu situation, Sinchenko not being available and, you know, playing Kivi or at left back, who's a centre half, it just exemplifies the problem we have at our left hand side. That probably could cost us, you know, the, you know, the league because of the fact that we're playing square pegs around round holes in terms of like Kivio should never ever should be at, in that position but because Sinchenko can't defend and because he's proved costly especially the diagonal ball he's got to play but you know in terms of like um um that that situation and the team selection itself let's face it we're knackered the performance was a very tight performance you know you would have thought that we would have got invigorated with the fact that Wolves had you know probably half their team out you'd have thought what oh, god you know, we you know, we could go there, clean up, you know, improve our goal differences, which is great already. But physically and mentally, we're not at it. It's not to do with the fact that um, you know, the losses against um Bayern Munich and Aston Villa. It's just that the effort we pay, we use when we use that played that kind of um expansive, you know, very attacking football where we just let's just say we obliterated teams. We didn't thrash them, we obliterated them. West Ham, Sheffield United and Burnley. Well, the teams we're going to be playing are not of that level or that low level. And the way, the effort we put in, we're not going to be able to do it physically. We weren't going to be able to do it. So we've got to find another way to play. But the way the manager could, you know, help his cause is make some changes, you know, freshen it up like Liverpool did today. You know, Thomas Partey, again, that's a great, great um, point that, you know, you both you made about his inclusion of the team. I think he has to be included from now on because Jorginho, you think about it, if you bought a player who's horse of courses and you're playing about 50 or 60 games, the horse of courses guy only plays about a third of those games, you know, to, if you go by footballing logic. But he's had to play a lot of those games because, you know, Thomas Partey hasn't been fit. Well, now Thomas Partey is in a situation where he's a lot fresh in Jorginho, playing with a three. And I think another problem we've got is that you can't shoehorn Kai Havertz in the team at all costs especially where it's not working. All right, it's working up top, it's not working in the field. Leave him out. Put him on the bench and bring Thomas Party in. Even if, if, because what's going to happen now? You're going to hurt the team because you think about it, in midfield, nothing's happening there. Unless you've got a, someone like Chinchenko who can play the, you know, play through the lines and get him on, get him to play in that sort of jacker position where he, 
he gets in the end of sh- chances, if he's creating or he's, he's having shots and goal. What's the point of him in midfield? What is the actual point? There is no point of him being there unless he's up top. But the problem is, you play him up top, that messes up Jesus's game and it messes up Martinelli. So this is what he needs to do. And another thing as well, Smith Rowe has to be looked at as well. He's fresh. You know, we know he's got a bit of a goal threat. You know, this is a great opportunity with, you know, Chelsea um, on Tuesday and the North London derby, freshen it up, rotate. Because you're not rotating for a rotating set, you're rotating because, you know, your better players are actually on the the knees. Declan Rice is done. He's on his knees. Saka, well documented, he's actually on his knees. Holy God is getting there as well. So if you think about red zone and green zones like Wenger used to always, you know, talk about, well, we're at that situation now. He's got to trust that bench. So he doesn't trust that bench. He can kiss goodbye to a title and kiss goodbye to Silver. And then doubts will come in, debates will be had in and out, and it'll be all on him. You know, we're not doing it because, you know, we've got, um, you know, preconceived ideas about him as a person. It's the things that he does. I haven't got a problem with him. I've got a problem with what you do. And this is a big test now. These next five games, rotate your squad for God's sake or else... You know, go on your holidays without any trophies. Well, listen, I think you're talking a lot of facts there, Kenny. And like, Lee, I've got to ask you what side of the coin you're at, man. Out of these two statements. Statement number one, Arsenal need a new left back. Statement number two, we haven't been able to get a left back because Timber's injured. Which one are you at? Well, that's, I think that's a good good question. I think, like, you know, unfortunately, with Timber being injured has, you know, scarped us a little bit there. Uh, you know, I, I, I agree with with the Tommy Asu thing. You know, I think he does all right there. I thought, he, you know, but he's never he's never there. Um, I don't know if we could have um, kept Tierney if if when that happened. I don't know. Like, I thought. I think if if I remember rightly, Timber got injured and then we let Tierney go after that. Is that right? I think we did. Madness, madness decision. Mad- really, now when you think, yeah, of it. I'm, I'm going to have to say that was a mad one, like you know, and and on top of that. You know, people keep slagging off Shinchenko. Don't forget he was not fit all through pre-season. He never played in yeah. any pre-season and everything like that. So, you know... Which is even more of a crazy decision when you think of it. crazy decision because once you've not, not had a pre-season, you're never quite like you should be. So, I I, I don't understand it on, on a couple of fronts, really, on that point of view. Um, maybe they thought, like, um, Tommy Asu would, would come in there. Listen, Kivier's done okay. Um, but as Kenny says, you know, he's not really, the, you know, there to, to do that. Um, so uh, I do find that strange. They've got, I, I think they've got to to address that next season, what they're going to do. I, I I don't mind it when we're playing like the lesser teams at home, if you like, when you need to have that extra one in midfield and Shinchenko coming in there. But but if, if I'll be really honest about it, guys, Shinchenko's record on the injury front ain't exactly... Um, brilliant, you know. I no. think he's on his third injury on his calf this season already, like you know. Um, and I don't know if Tommy Asu was fatigued or whatever, I don't really know what you know. Really, not got a knock, he said, apparently. Someone yeah, told he me really... that he got a knock. What does that mean, you know? Like, well, I don't know, Dan, because before that, he said, like, no, there's no problems from any of the players, yeah, uh, in his press conference. And he says he's got a knock, so it might be just fatigue resting him for, for um, the next two games. I don't know, but. Uh, this thing about freshening up, I think that, it, you know, we may have to do that now um, with Thomas Party coming. It's interesting that he, he used Party instead of uh, Jorginho on um, on Saturday. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. It was a hard turnaround what to do on that game there, um, whether, whether to what to do with, with whatever. And I, I think that, um, you know, looking at Liverpool today, that, that was very, very, very brave of... Um, um, Klopp to, to do that, like you know, so uh, um, yeah, so but but he, he got the result uh, by doing it his way. Um, they've got a massive game, of course, on Wednesday with the um, uh, Everton Liverpool game, the Merseyside Derby. We've got two massive, massive games now, you know, so I don't know what, what he's gonna do. Uh, it'd be really interesting to see what he's gonna do, um, with um. The team selection on Tuesday, uh, they're going to be key over these next few games. I, I don't care what anybody says, but I, I'm going to be really honest now. You, 
if we can't afford to drop any points, whether it, if, if we drop any points Tuesday or, or Sunday, it's, it's done because maybe one of them would drop points, but I don't see two of them uh, doing it. Um, so it's going to be really, really um, difficult. Um, you know, I, I don't... I, when, when I look at players like Odegaard and Saka and those sort of guys, I don't really see anybody coming in and and, and doing doing the job that they do. So it's going to be difficult to, to replace. I don't mind the two central, central defenders playing week in, week out. I don't think that's a problem. Um, but, you know, there's a couple of tricky areas there. But I'm with you guys now. I think what I see on um, on, on Saturday that... that um, Party signs, but uh, play. Sorry, but like you know, there's some other fringe players. You know what I mean? I haven't seen enough of Vieira this this season. Like really, if I'll be really honest, I haven't seen enough of Smith Rowe. Even in that game there, <laughs> couldn't really afford to make the changes. Um, it, it was too tight when it at one nil. Like you know, so very very difficult. Um, I agree with Kenny to a certain degree there. I do think that we look a little bit leggy as well, you know, in the performance, if, if you know, uh, which is frightening, a little bit worrying. We're just going to have to see how it goes, boys, really, you know, and, and believe that we can get through these games. Uh, if we can get through these two games, then we've got a week off. I know that sounds silly. That might do us well to good, but um, we're going to have to... Um, What's the navigate the ship very, very well in these next two games? Yeah, we are, man. Listen, Kenny, I'm going to put this on the screen. It's going to be quite small for viewers. So, apologies. I did this on my channel. Um, uh, and I want to take you through it. It's talking about exactly what we're on about, which is the amount of minutes that we have been playing our players in the Premier League and the Champions League. Now, this is quite telling for me. Not so much the players that have played the amount of games, but the players that haven't. And what I mean by that is Gabriel and Saliba have obviously played the most amount of minutes. Now, that proves that we have absolutely no cover at centre-back other than Kivior and Tommy Asu and Ben White, who have all been playing at full-back, right? Declan Rice has played every single pretty much minute of the game, and he's been phenomenal. He's durable, right? But that proves we've got absolutely nobody other than Declan Rice. Martin Erdegaard, likewise, you can take him off, but he hasn't wanted to trust Vieira or Smith-Rowe one bit. Saka, we've spoken about. The kid looks absolutely flogged. And obviously, Ben White's player as well. Ray and Ramsdale, we've had the debate about. Kai Havertz has played in a number of positions. But as you start to go down, you look at Zinchenko and Jesus, who were Manchester City's signings, who everyone said was going to take us to the next level. They're no longer playing a lot of minutes. They're actually now squad players for us. They don't get into our first side. But then as you start to go down more and more and more, you look at Aaron Ramsdale and look at the players after Aaron Ramsdale here. This is actually quite ridiculous. We've got Thomas Party that we know about. That's injury, right? That's not because he didn't want to play him. But look, look at Smith Rowe, Fabio Vieira and Reese Nelson. They have played less minutes than Aaron Ramsdale. That is absolutely criminal in a season where we've had to go for as many competitions as we can. We've got Cedric Elneny, Timber and Waneri. Not going to count them because Cedric and Elneny are out of contract. Timber's been injured the whole year. And Waneri, obviously, is a young kid. But look at Vieira, Smith, Rowe and Nelson there. They played 368, 369 and 431 minutes. That is disgraceful. Three players that he has kept on, by the way. A player he's put on 100k a week in Nelson. A player he spent £35 million on in Vieira. And someone in Smith Row who's had some injury problems, but he keeps saying in press conferences has got a huge, huge future at the club and a player he loves. I ain't seen him. Now, people might say we haven't had a chance to bring him on, like Lee Judges just said, and I agree with you there. But I didn't see these players when we were beating Sheffield United 6 0, and Burnley 6 0, and West Ham 6 0, when we were 3 or 4 0 up at half time. I didn't see any of these players coming on then. So he hasn't trusted any of this squad whatsoever when it matters. And that for me is criminal, Kenny. 100%. And I, I, I've been a massive critic of that. You know, I think that, you know, sometimes um, when we look at transfer windows, uh, especially last season, we give it, you know, ridiculously high marks. <clears throat> when, let's face it, if you compare the, the squads of even Liverpool and with that, that Man City, you can, you can talk about numbers, but it has to be quality. Man City have got quality replacements. They've got two players for every position. Liverpool, you know, virtually have, if you, you know, especially when their players are fit, especially their front line. But in terms of Arsenal, until we sort out our squad in terms of quality and we sort out our left hand side, 
you can forget about competing for trophies. You can, you know, if we do get the league, it'll be in spite of, but it'd be a fantastic achievement. I'm, I'm great with both hands. But if you, you don't want to preempt anything, but if you think that if we do what a lot of people fear, go out silverware, well, questions will have to be asked about our left hand side and definitely the general quality of the squad. Because as, as you said, Eddie and Ketia, you know, Arteta's um, realised since the turn of the calendar year, maybe that NNK is not a man he can rely on anymore in terms of style of play. And then you look at Smith Rowe again, despite what he says about loving him, well, you can still love someone and sell them and wish them the best of luck and say, come back and visit whenever you can. Don't have to play them. You know, it's just it's absolute nonsense what he's saying about Smith Rowe because he would have played him. And, you know, the games like yesterday, he could have played, especially with a depleted Wolves. But again, who buys the players? What possessed him to give um, Eddie Nketiah and, and um, Reese Nelson extending contracts and then not play him? Who, whose decision is that? You know, he's the team manager and he has a lot of say regarding the transfer committee, yet he's made decisions that only um, a money man will make. You know, give you know, give your English-based players um, renew contracts and get their value up and then you get you know through ffp i mean it's it's just ridiculous really um the whole, the whole situation and it's it speaks for volumes obviously there's there are injury situations with jesus he's been in, injured and he's been in that team because senko's the same sort of um, um situation but eddie hasn't been that injured but he's not good enough smith rowe but regardless of what arteta says the We've passed him by. The team's passed him by, you know. And with Smith Rowe, I can think of about three or four players who will go play in front of him. If you, if you have positions for Smith Rowe, I could say, well, he's in front of him. Vieira's an enigma. He has been injured, but you think about it. We got outnumbered in midfield against Villa, and by me, he can't get a game. Someone who's good on the ball, another body who can give us, you know, that kind of, um, you know, passing, forward passing ability. So, you know, it's definitely something the manager needs to do. It's definitely going to be on him. He's something he's got to think about. Because, you know, they, our squad last season was part of the problem, especially when we lost um, Saliba and we had to revert to Rob Holding. Same situation now. Squad's part of the problem. You know, thank God our setbacks are fully, fully fit. But, you know, you only got really Kivio. Who else? Benny White? You know... This, and I just want to sort of dispel a myth as well. The garbage that comes out of a lot of our fans that, oh, yeah, Timber would have played at left back and he's a left back. You're having a laugh. The guy was a bloody, was a centre half and a right centre half. He's only He was only covering there because Simchenko was injured. So don't think that, you know, we don't have to spend money in the positions. But same situation. We got a, If we're going to get the players we need, we're going to need some wholesale departures. So I'm going to just say it on your show, Lee. I love you. Uh, I might as well, you know, do what I normally do. Say something controversial. Martinelli, I want sold. I want Smith Rowe sold. I want Sinchenko sold. I want Tommy Asu sold. I want Miss Nelson sold. I want Enkid and Katie sold. And, you know, that's that's for a start because I know I can recruit some money in order to get better replacements. Players can actually. I agree. I agree with all of them apart from Martinelli. Go on, talk on Martinelli. Reason, talk on Martinelli. Right. Reason, why, reason, why, reason why I say with Martinelli, I'm only I'm only Im imitating what the manager did by trying to sign Mudrick last season for a whole bunch of money. There is no way we got Mudrick that Martinelli would have um, started games. So if he's got that's what Martinelli, I have as well. And you look at the situation now with Martinelli since he come back to the team, Martinelli. As good as he is, needs a Sachenko in the team, and he needs a Jesus in that team. Now, with Kai Havertz in the squad, Kai Havertz, if you play him up top, it kills Jesus. It makes Jesus a squad player. It kills Martinelli as well, I think. It kills Martinelli's potency. And that's why I'm thinking has Martinelli actually developed, you know, from that play? Yes, he had a good season, but you compare it in terms of like the the levels that you we believe Saka's going to go to once he gets fit and once he starts grab, grabbing games by the scruff of the neck. I'm not sure I can say that about Martinelli. So I've got no problem cashing in. But I'm only cashing in from a good place because I only want these players gone to recruit the money because the, the board are going to say we can't afford these 
afford um, to spend the amount of money we need in the squad. So make some sacrifices. Get the players in. Get the players who you think are going to challenge Saka for that right hand side. Get us get the forward we desperately need. And then look at your centre halves and say, right, I need some cover there. And then that left hand side, especially at left back. Because the board are going to say that if we keep all those players, the board are going to say, we're well, here's 200 million. And then you're still going to have that problem with that left hand side. And you may not get that striker we need. And then I'll say, well, that's it. FFP, come January, no signings. That's what's going to happen because that's what happened this time. I, I think with the Martinelli one, Kenny, I, 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 I wouldn't go down that route. And, and the reason why is because I think all the left side has been taken down. You know what I mean? Like, uh, Shinchenko ain't already been there. Um, Shaka's not been there. And we haven't really found the, the right placements in there. Uh, and, and also, he's been injured. But I think he... Um, Don't you think the Kai Havertz conundrum is part of the problem? Because if you think about it, you play Kai Havertz in the midfield. No, four, he can't play there. Then what will happen is that you've got a situation where it's not going to work. So you're going to play him up top. You play him up top, then... For Martinelli, for Martinelli always plays his best football alongside Jesus. Really? And he always need, failing that, he, he really needs not to, to put those balls balls in for him. Plus, he's had fitness issues as well. You look at the you look at um yesterday when he went one and one, the Martinelli of old that's fit and firing puts that away. Now that, I'm not having a go for fitness issues, but I'm just looking at the situation. I'm thinking there's a, an area where I think the manager himself by, you know, actively trying to replace him since January 23, speaks a lot of volumes. Maybe the manager feels, you know what, I can get an upgrade there. So I'm just intending, like, I'm following what I've seen. But in terms of, do I rate Martinelli? Of course I rate him. But I, no, do, I I think better, do, do I think there's better out there than Martinelli? Oh, how, oh yeah, 100%. That's not personal, it's Martinelli. I just want the best for Arsenal. I want players who, who are on the level of um, City. And, you know, on the level of what I feel that Liverpool have at the moment. Because I do think that certain players, I'm now questioning, can these, can this squad win me the league? Give me the silverware I deserve and what I demand. I'm not sure. Interesting, I do man. Cause I, 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 do think, I understand what you're saying, Ken, and I do think we need upgrades. And I said right at the start of the season before a ball was kicked, the squad weren't, weren't quite ready still. And I didn't believe the manager um, could get this squad across the line. Um, but he thought he could, you know, he 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 wanted these players, he didn't strengthen in other positions and he said this squad was good enough to go win trophies and we got to go and do that. Now we might still win the league, a hundred percent Lee, we might, all right. Yes. Um, we'll, we'll we'll come we'll come back to that in a minute with the old Martinelli thing, because I do I do like him <laughs> look at my mum in the chat Lee. She said, Not Martinelli, get twenty nine gone, he hinders Martinelli. <laughs> <laughs> she hates her. Get us the hand. Donna, Donna, Don, Donna. Um, my, you don't spend sixty-five million pound on a player and do any do anything other than shoehorn him in the side, which is what we've done. You know, you know, it's classic shoehorning of um, Kai Havertz. You know, you, I'm surprised I haven't played him in goal. <laughs> um, you know, just because because I spent sixty-five million pound on him. But come on, if 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 anyone can't can tell me any different, you know. Try and explain Kai Havertz in the midfield to me. Is that, and uh, no one can, mate. That. that is crap. That is well, crap. I, I honestly yeah. think like Kai Havertz was brought to, to play in multiple positions. And uh, listen, I thought he played well yesterday. You, like, say, like, like, you say like Mikel, you say like... You just, no, no, I, I do. Well, I think what well, he does... Well, he's, 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 I might as well get you a sort of like Joe Knighty wig, put in your head and just say angle. <laughs> Uh, he's, done a good, he's, he's done a good job you, up front for us. You might as well, that's what Mikel would have said. I, I think he's done well for us up front. I, I don't know what, what, what's going to happen with Kai Everts at the end of the day. I don't. Um, but I, I, I think that, you know, he played well yesterday. Um, in a role... He's, he's going to be a squad player, Lee, isn't he, next year? He ain't going to be a starter next year, Everts. Well, uh, horses yeah, for courses, right, you know? I, I've actually liked him and, and liked the way we played when he played up front. I think he's good enough we, for a starter. When we was banging in goals left, right and centre, and I thought he, he, we was doing really well. But... For Kai Havertz to click up front, you've got to have the two wide players clicking. And I, I think that the way uh, um, Mikel set up, particularly yesterday, I noticed it a little bit yesterday, the wingers are very, very deep. They're not 
connected to the to the centre forward. Uh, Jesus was isolated a lot because we was very very defensive minded with our with our shape, and uh, you know that's something that they're going to have to look at. Maybe they don't, you know, with um, the left hand side. They was you know Trossard was having to cover Kivia because they don't trust him. So I don't know. That's something to look at, like you know, but. Um, you know, if Kai Havertz is a squad player next season, then, you know, that shows you that we've got the right players in, like, you know, and that's And I'm, I'm cool with that, Lee. I'm fine by that. If he's a squad player, that's that's not me going, oh, he's trash, get rid of it. That, for me, is what I think he should be. I think he's a player that can come on as a sub and give us a different dimension. I think he can go up top. I think he can go in a couple of other positions, but I do mm. prefer him as a number nine, and I don't think it's a bad thing. I wanted to mention quickly uh, on two players before we do come to the last question of the night. I, I'll come to you with this, Lee. Uh, Declan Rice has got eight player of the matches this season for Arsenal. He's been phenomenal. He really has. If Arsenal to do the unthinkable, um, I think we'd look towards the players like Gabriel Saliba that have been great. But I really do think we'll look towards him. And I think that if that, that to me, that signing for me, I know Erdegaard and Gabriel have been phenomenal signings for Mikel Arteta, but I really do think this one yeah. is probably my favourite one. I, I must say it. Dan, I'm going to be really honest with you. I, I don't think if Declan Rice was playing yesterday, we win that game. I think we draw it. I think that that's, that was how important he was in that last 20, 25 minutes. Why? Because he's a he's a you know a hundred million pound player. I think that he's great. Um, it, you know, I wouldn't say the same with Havertz. If Havertz was playing or he weren't playing, you know, what I mean, that's a, that, that's the difference. He's a ga- he's a game changer. He is a top top player. Um, and if we are to beat Chelsea, he's going to have to be at his very, very best. He's going to have to be at his very, very best at Tottenham. But they all are. They're all going to have to be at their best. I think it's very, very interesting. What say? You know, I don't, I don't think we'll even be having a debate about who was up front. You know, at the beginning of the last season, before before Jesus was injured, I always remember that day it happened. Dan, we was we was in London. I said this could be you know disasters. You know what I mean? Knee injury. Um, I don't think he's quite the same as what he was, and uh, even though he, he he was a game changer for his with the with the guy, he's not the player that he was. But um, this hope the hope he is. I I think Declan Rice is. If Arsenal win the league, then it's because of Declan Rice. There you go. Yeah, I agree with it, man. I agree with it. Last question, Kenny. Before we come to the last question, and that for me, uh, Trossard. Um, Good goal mm. yesterday. I know people will say it's a bit of a fluke, but you've got to put him in, and he did. It looked good when he come off the bar as well. Is he a starter for you, or has he come off the bench? Because I look at our top scorers, right, and he has got the best mm. goal conversion. He's uh, four off of our top goal scorers. He's got 14 goals, and he never really starts. When he does start, some people think he's a super sub. Yesterday, me, my dad and Mark were sat there, and we went, oh, he's a bit of a super sub, and he? he's better when he comes off the bench, Trossard. Mm. About 30 seconds later, bang, top corner, goes in. So where do you stand with Trossard? Because I think he's been a really good player for us, a really good signing, and one that not a lot of people mention, but he's right up there with the stats this season, Kenny. He's a very good player. I think he's um, he's suited to Europe, in European style, and I'll 100% um, start him. You know, without hesitation and Champions League, but in terms of the league itself, well, this if you play Kat Kuyavitz up top, there's a good chance of um, starting because it's between him and Jesus for me. Because I think Martinelli's probably a little bit down the pecking order. But the problem with Trossard, and it's, it's you know, early in the season, he has dropped the ball when he started, hasn't he? He's dropped the ball a few times. You know, did he start in the North London derby? Well, because I think he started in that game, he dropped the ball. And there was a you know a couple of few few games where he he started games and we had to substitute him in half time because you know it hasn't worked. Whilst you know it comes off from the substitute that great goal against Liverpool, so it's a, a kind of a mixed bag. But I think the thing with Trossard, if he had Martinelli's pace, yeah, along along alongside his um you know his goal poaching and his his Genoa say quite great son out of nothing. <laughs> We wouldn't really have that conversation. I don't think anyone challenged me about selling right early. You know what I mean? But I think that's the thing. His the equaliser that goes against him is a lack of pace, mm. and I think that that's the situation where, unfortunately, in Premiership football, especially when you're playing for like big, big teams, you've got to have pace on each side, pace on the right, pace on the left, in order for you to start games, and 
ultimately pace through the middle or strong running. So because of his lack of pace, it's going to be hard for me to start in um, in games. You know what I mean? I think I think Chotter's a bit quicker than him. You know, he's he's not he's not quite um, Chotter the slaughter. If you, if you know what I mean? But yeah, he 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 he, 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 can, he can slot him in. You know, give him a, a chance, but you ain't going to get the Martinelli Martinelli type pace. But yeah, it's you know, I do think that yeah, we would. He's the best finisher club. at the club, Ken. Isn't he? He's the best finisher at the club. Yeah, so so yeah, nine out of ten times, the best finisher at any football club tends to be the super sub. Because, you know, when super subs come on, it's they're there to get that one chance, that one moment. And, you know, they do tend to be of, of that um, ilk. But in terms of um, all-round play, excellent. You know, work rate, excellent. But pace, premiership, no, we need pace, man. Mm. Yeah, man, listen, I agree with that. And I think Martinelli, that's one thing that, I mean, let's just take, for example, the situation at the Etihad where Trossard goes through and you've just got to get him to either cross that to Martinelli or go straight a goal. He tried, decides mm. to go at goal and we're all going, no. Now, if that's Martinelli, it's the opposite. We're going, run at goal, go, don't cross it, run mm. at goal. That's the difference between them both, you know? Mm. And it was mad that actually we saw for the first time Martinelli right and Trossard left at the Etihad. That's the first time I've ever seen that. And it's a shame because actually if Martinelli gets that ball into Trossard position, he's through and he's one-on-one -on -one with Edison. So who knows what happens there? Um, Lee, look, we've got an unbelievable game on Tuesday night. And I think to wrap up, we've got to mention it because we might not get much yeah. of a chance. Um, what do you, how do you see this one going? We've got to keep Palmer quiet. We've got to win the midfield battle against Caicedo and Enzo. When I say it like that, it don't sound that hard because of how Chelsea have been quite poor and inconsistent this season. But you know with the players that they have got, and they have got a little ounce of quality, that they can turn it on. You know, I'm a big fan of Malo Gosto. I'm a big fan of Palmer. And Caicedo and Enzo are a lot of money in midfield, which proves they've got some good players. They've got some workhorses like Gallagher. Um, I was disappointed with Chelsea's finishing against City. I thought Jackson and Madueke were terrible, if I'm honest. Yeah. And I hope they're like that on Tuesday night. But um, what, what's your thoughts going into this one, bro? The, the, the biggest worry for me is there was, there was pressure on Chelsea yesterday. Uh, yesterday and it, it, they crumbled on it, like you know what I mean? Because they missed their chances. They're going to come to the Emirates. It doesn't matter if they win, lose or draw. You know what I mean? It ain't going to affect them, their season. So that's a dangerous animal as far as I'm concerned because they can come there with a little bit of freedom. We haven't got that freedom. We've got the, you know, we can't afford to to, to drop points in this game. I, I'm going to be honest. If, if it, we, we go down 70 minutes and it's still nil-nil or we're not winning that game, we I think we're in trouble. So we've got to be uh, clinical, come out, guns blazing and uh, take our opportunities in the first couple of 10, 15 minutes and, and then it'll be a different game. I, listen, I'm being honest, it's not going to be pretty. This is not going to be an enjoyable game for us Arsenal fans. I think it's going to be really, really tough and one to, to uh, just try and get over the line and just tick the boxes. A little bit different with Tottenham because they've got things to play for. This is a dangerous one. Uh, they can come there, sit back, ain't got no pressure on them uh, and, and frustrate. And if they frustrate, we could make mistakes. So, listen, this is this is going to be really, really tough. And uh, But I think we just get over the line. But it's not going to be enjoyable, boys. Not going to be enjoyable. No. Kenny, what's your thoughts going into this one Tuesday, brother? Well, at least I'm saying, right. You know, days of playing those, that beautiful football that we saw at West Ham, you know, Burnley and... Um, you know, and obviously uh, Sheffield United and Lee singing his new song, Who Put the Ball in the Arsenal Net? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, going to away games with Lee, especially West Ham, and like, who's put the ball in the Arsenal Net? Who put the ball in the Arsenal Net? Kids are watching. I'm not going to finish the song. Do not swear. It's the West Ham Net, by the way, Kenny. <laughs> fucking not the Arsenal oh. one. Uh, you know what? I call it the Lee, I, I, I call it the Lee song because Lee, you were just like, I thought, bloody hell, I thought we were in a choir there. You, the way you were going, you were singing it. Because you were right near me anyway. But the yeah. you know, days of that are over. We're going to, because of the fact that um, we're playing against better opposition and the fact that, you know, we're running on empty, you know, we're you're going to see some ugly football. You're going to see times where we're going to have backs to the wall and that we're going to be making blocks, you know, cl clearances, you know, taking any chance you want. You know, there's going to be a lot of um, shithousery. 
we're going to have to shit our, our way through these games, especially tomorrow. Because so Tuesday, because I think Chelsea are going to be really, really fresh. Because you know, obviously they're playing in the FA Cup semi final, but in terms of the number of games they we've played compared to them, I do think that you know they're going to probably you know be a bit fresh. And plus, they're smarting as well because let's not forget we nicked a two uh, a draw there where. You know, for about seventy percent of the game, they were better than us. And then last thirty, we we could even nick to winner. So you know, there's going to be some battles. The midfield battle is going to be interesting. Paul Palmer's going to just drift into nowhere, and then come out of nowhere to you know try and hurt us. So yeah, it's going to be a really really big game. But this is going to be an opportunity where we're going to rotate. And that's no disrespect against Chelsea, but you know you have to fresh it up. You know, preferably in midfield, and maybe you know. You know, look at the left hand side. Who do you, you know? Left hand side of the, um, you know, of attack. You know, who do you play? Do you play Jesus? Do you play Martinelli? Do you play? Uh, um, do you or do you play Trossard? Depends. You know, who who who's going to actually feed them? If you've got someone who's got great pass for the ball and, and get Martinelli in the game, yeah, the one we starting because you know. Lee wants a fast start. Well, you can't get a faster start with Martinelli and um, Saka and all firing all cylinders early on in the game and just, you know, scaring the life out of Gusto and scaring the life out of Chilwell if he starts. So, yeah, you know, that that is the sort of thing we're going to need. But it's we're going to suffer. You know, Chelsea, like Tottenham, are determined to put a spoke in the wheel. Their mission now is to stop us from winning the league. Spurs and Chelsea, operation yeah. stop us. Don't, yeah. Yeah. don't believe anything. If you think Chelsea have got nothing to play for, well, there's no, no bigger incentive for them to think, you know what, we don't want Arsenal winning the league because we had enough of their supporters and we still they think they're the biggest team in London. Well, yeah, you're going to get a performance from it, of endeavour from them. And you know, you look what that was like against Spurs a few years ago, Kenny. Yeah, exactly. Remember, remember that time you had the yeah. um, stop them, help, they helped Leicester win the league, where yeah, that's probably right Chelsea's best right performance. Yeah. Especially when they're tuning with Dan. You know, the heads didn't go down. I went, yeah, let's have some of that. And they, and they not only that, though, boys, it. right? Not only that, though, boys, right? You've got Chelsea that are fighting for Europe, Tottenham are fighting for Champions League, and they can stick it on Arsenal to stop us getting the league. That's more of an incentive to go and play well. Oh, I, think, I, think, I think the latter, the latter you mentioned is probably more important to both teams than the actual what they're going for. You know, they'll I think tell it's you more to... important to the fans. I think it's more important to their fans. And I think it's oh, more important yeah, to their that, transmit, that transmit to their players, though. Because despite the yeah. fact that you know that they Chelsea could sneak in the Euro, I don't know how they've been a solid ninth ninth place, you know, all season. You know what I mean? So you know, even if they even if they do get something, they're probably going to be ninth because you know it's, it's probably going to be a fluky result. Although West Ham today, you know, West Ham are massive, got a hiding from Crystal Palace, but you know, you never know. But I do think that Operation Stop Arsenal will be in um, full flow on Tuesday. So. You know, mm. expect a shit housery type of game. Yeah, man, I agree. It's going to be a mad one. It really is. Listen, lastly, before we do close, I know Lee ain't got long. Um, I'll go with my team for Tuesday. I'll tell you what I'd go with: Raya, White, Saliba, Gabriel, and it have to be Kivior if Tommy Asu's injured. I wouldn't go Zinchenko. Uh, I'll go and party Rice and Odegaard. That's what I'm doing now. Party Rice, Odegaard in midfield, and then my front three. People might think this is mad, but I would actually drop Saka. I would have Jesus wide right. And I would have Trossard through the middle and Martinelli left. And then I would bring on Havertz and Saka to impact the game. That's what mm. I would do. Um, some people would disagree and play Havertz because they think he's important. Play Saka because you can't drop him. That was what I would do. I'd try Trossard through the middle because I like him in that false nine. Martinelli with pace on the left. And Jesus working hard on that right-hand side. Uh, judges, what are you saying? Uh, I, I wouldn't be at, uh, um, adverse to leaving Saka out this game just to give him a rest ready for Tottenham. And play Jesus, Havertz, and uh, Trossard. Okay, interesting. Kenny, what will your front three be against Chelsea? My front three would be Bukayo Saka because I don't know. I'd just go with the mate. And I'll, and I'll have Kai Havertz up top, and I'll, I'll probably would go with the work rate and the endeavour of Jesus. You know, you know that she's going to be hard than Martinelli, but oh, she's just not at it, is he, really? And Trossard yeah. just hasn't got the sufficient pace. You know, I do think that, you know, Work rate and maybe you know a little bit of pace will give um, Gusto um, something to work with. But in terms of Saka, well, you know, well we we do. The thing with Saka, as much as you criticise him, the 
the numbers are still good. Yeah, yeah. The fruits are not there. The numbers are still good, and you still feel thirty-one that. man, thirty-one he's, goals. He's and like, crazy. Yeah, yeah he's, he's highly likely to create some kind of nothing. You know, create chaos. I get a goal. You know, draw a foul, or you know, create an assist. So you want to leave him out, but I do understand with the if we if we got a sort of um, intense game and then. Well, we've got five days rest, haven't we, for the North London Derby? Yeah, that's so, a good point. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so that is something, you, something you've got to do because, as we say, as much as the rotation in certain areas is ne necessary, especially in midfield, mm -hmm. but when it comes to your match winner, you know, you still want your match winner who are to play. So, yeah, I definitely um, will look at him. But in the left back position, um, if you think, if, if Sinchenko is fit, and you don't want him in there anywhere near Spurs. I think you could play Sinchenko um, in that game on um, on um, Tuesday with the proviso that yeah, let's get him out there and, and maybe um, freshen up Kivio because I think you know, Kivio's you know going to get a bit of a test on um, on Sunday because I think we're going to really need him because Spurs, especially down there right side, you don't know whether they're going to play Johnson or um, yeah. Johnson, who's who's, the, who's that? Who's that guy? What's his name again? Swedish guy, Swedish guy who, who's in and out of that side. What's his name? Um, Kulishevsky, that's right. Kulishevsky, yeah. yeah. And then you know, um, Poro as well. You know, he's gonna have a game and a half, so I've won him fresh for that. Um, North London derby, mm, yeah, it's interesting, man. Look to close because we've got to go. What are you going for, score prediction wise, Lee Judges? 2 1 to the yeah. Arsenal. That's what I'm going for. 2 1 Arsenal as well. Kenny, what are you saying? 2-1 to the Arsenal, 100%. It's going to be a late goal, late goal. You know, it's going to be all sort of limbs, probably scoring a 95th minute, but I don't think they won't complain too much. Mate, we'll take 2-1, that's for Thank sure. Um, 100%. Let's just get the job done. I don't care how we do it. I don't care if it's 1-0 when it comes off of Havertz's backside, mate. I just want three points since many times. <laughs> for these <laughs> next five, that's all I want. Uh, listen, do me a favour, people. Smash a like on this. Make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned. It's going to take you over to Sam and Mo, who are absolutely going at it uh, tonight. So please make sure you do that. I'm going to redirect to them because that's going to be hilarious. So make sure that you're tuned for that. And uh, we will see you next time, people. Take it easy. Uh, we are out of here because Lee's got to shoot off. Take it easy. We're out. Yes, judges. Yeah. Hello, Dan. How are you doing? You all right? you, bro? I'm actually watching the football, mate. This Surfshark VPN is a lifesaver, mate. You can watch the football with a dodgy Wi-Fi, even at the Emirates when you've got a big crowd there and everything like that, watching the football. Unbelievable. Easy to set up? Well, it must be if you've done it, mate. Oh, very, very funny. Even abroad you can, like. You can watch all your favourite programmes. It's like being at home, mate. And that's exactly what you guys can do too. Click the link in the description for Surfshark VPN.